So I want to uh, bring back the director, Sandy Dubowski, along with several people who are in the film, Rabbi Steve Greenberg, Michelle Miller, David Silverstein, and Naomi Mark. So, <clears throat> Sandy, let me uh, start with you. It's been 15 years since uh, this film was made. Uh, I wonder f for you, uh, you know, what that 15 years has meant, what you've seen this film do, and what you think has changed in 15 years. Wow. Um, well, uh, it is kind of amazing to, to <laughs> see it communally again. Um, there's been enormous change. Uh, you know, there's people here who, gosh, how old were you all? Like, there's, there's, um, J JQY, Jewish Queer Youth, can you raise your hands? Like, I mean, I just remember a week after Trembling played at Film Forum that this new generation of teenagers and early 20-somethings um, basically formed this whole movement. And, you know, we really have represented in this room multiple generations of activism and of change makers. And, and I'm, you know, so amazed at what JQY, they're now in their 30s. Um, so, so, you know, I mean, I think like, you know, we're here and I mean, everyone's life has dramatically changed who's in this film and it's pretty extraordinary. I mean, it, it's just, it's been an enormous movement. I mean, you know, I did personally 800 live events um, with trembling around the world. And so is this 801? This is 801. So, uh, well, but, let, let me put a version of this question to the other people on stage. I'd love to hear you reflect on something you heard yourself say in the movie and what you think about that 15 years later. Well, good evening, everybody. And I'm David Los Angeles. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why they, I'm David Silverstein. I mean, um, what was your question? I just wanted you to reflect on something you heard yourself say in the movie and, and what it means to you 15 years later. What's changed for you from this movie? I mean, honestly, I, I'm very proud that, I, that I'm very grateful to Sandy for making the film and for enabling, because this was really huge 15 years ago. It was way before the Kardashian. The microphone. It was, very, it was before reality TV, and we're, which is now is basically all there is. And... And so this was really, it was a huge thing. And also it was really one of the first topic, one of the first films that really addressed directly the Orthodox community and say, okay, you have to deal with this reality of gay people that grew up Orthodox, and what do we do? It was never addressed before, and kids were killing themselves and were being disowned, and it was... It's a very serious issue that needs to be that needed to be addressed. But anyways, so it's interesting that the Rebbe, I, even to this day, I think, how could a man who is so worldly and so knowledgeable not give me the advice? But so I, because of that, I did the best I could. I did everything humanly I could, and so and, and now I'm actually I'm actually married, and um, to a woman. Just kidding. And. Uh, <laughs> I finally changed after 12 years of therapy. I found this amazing therapist, and I'm on you know Xanax and Quaaludes and whatever. no. Um, so I'm married, and after, right after it legalized in L.A. in California, I think it was August or July of 2013, um, we got married a month later. We were met on January 10th, 16th, Match.com, and um, is that a product placement? <laughs> no, it's not at all. It's just that it, it actually was the guy here, a friend of mine in LA, said, you got to go on some of these websites. You're not going to meet anybody. And uh, so we met, and he's, uh, yeah, so we're married two and a half years. And it's interesting, just in terms, I'm talking too long. But, uh, well, uh, you, you came the furthest, so thank you uh, very much for being here from Los Angeles. But let right, me get some you. other uh, voices in here. Uh, uh, Michelle, uh, I would love to hear what this film meant to you after it came out. First of all, I didn't change a bit. <laughs> um, what the film means to me. Um, I know I'm no longer the only Hasidic lesbian in the world. Um, yes, lots of them out there, lots of them. 
Um, and they keep coming out, and it's great. Um, my parents, who I never, ever, 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 ever in my wildest dreams would think they'd come around, a year ago had my sister call me, and I was thinking, hmm, my sister? Somebody must have died. Um, but no, my parents have friends who are not religious who told them what you did was terrible. You should not have disowned your child. And so they told me that they wanted to meet me and my child. He was right over there. Um, <laughs> and so my kid now has a relationship with their grandparents. Wow. So anyone can, if my parents can change, anyone can change. It may have taken 15 years, uh, longer, because I was very much in the closet for a while before then, but anyone can change. And um, so much has happened, and I owe a world of gratitude to Sandy, who has been a catalyst for change in my life in such a major way. So thank you, Sandy for being, as I called him back then, the mitzvah man of the millennium. Um, just amazing, amazing guy. Has done so much for so many people and helped them be people. Um, so thank you. So uh, Rabbi, let me pass it uh, to you. Um, what has been your experiences with having this film out in the world? Well, I just want to say that this young guy who had more hair. In fact, they, he had just about as much hair, just in a different place. Uh, knocked on my door in 20 years ago, in 1996, when I was studying in Jerusalem, trying to figure my head out. Was on an internship, a fellowship. And he'd heard I'd started an underground, I was just slowly coming out, underground gay and lesbian study group. And he heard about it. He knocked on my door and said, I'm making a film about gay Orthodox Jews. And I said, you're insane. <laughs> so no one's going to see this film. No one's going to pay for this film. Anyway, you're not Orthodox. Who cares? No, you're not going to, it's not going to work. And, and he said, well, let me show you clips. And I said, oh, that's not so bad. And then after five meetings, he said, listen, I'm, you don't have to be in the film, but I want to tape you. So we had an interview. And, um, and uh, well, the story kind of emerges that he was right about everything. So Naomi, when you see yourself on screen in this film and think about the 15 years that have passed since then, what, what stands out to you? That I was 15 years younger. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when I, when I saw Israel you know, saying, I'm 58 years old, I thought, oh my God, he, I, years ago he seemed so old to me. Now, like, 58 is you know, no. coming up soon. <laughs> right, so that, but besides that, one of the, I mean, the, this film has impacted us in so, the world in so many, so many ways. But one thing, just to expand beyond the Orthodox world, you know, I, I remember being stopped on the street by people who, Mormons and Catholics and people from all different backgrounds saying this film changed my life and that this film spoke to me. So it was striking that it's not just the Orthodox world that you redeemed, but it's really so, uh, the world. <laughs> and anyone, and not just gay people, people who felt constrained in all sorts of ways, people who felt that they were living like as a circle and, and expected to be you know, fitting into a square hole, a square, whatever that, whatever that metaphor is. But <laughs> that people, that, but I think by, by opening up the world for gay people, you opened up the world for everybody who feels like they have an individual voice that they need to express. And you've done that so beautifully. And without anger and with just with beauty and holiness. So I, hats off to you. So the question was, did you anticipate the resonance or did it come as a surprise to you? I mean, I don't know if any of us um, imagined when we, even the first time that we began speaking, you know, I mean, we were all in such different places. I mean, you and all of us. Um, so I'll throw it back to everyone here, but I think it was really, like it really was a tipping point, um, definitely in the Orthodox and Jewish world. And I think that was completely, um, we didn't know. I mean, I, what I went through and when I realized I was gay at 19, because I went to Orthodox Jewish Day School through I threw senior year, and then I went to a yeshiva in Israel called Shalavim for a year. And I lived, I called my city as a classmate, is here I called. I grew up in Chicago, but it was pretty much like Anatevka. 
with automobiles and phones in terms of the mentality because homosexuality did not exist in our society, in our school. It, was, it wasn't spat on. It wasn't demonized. It just didn't exist like Martians don't exist. So the, so in terms of the questions about that, just be, I wanted to, I didn't want anybody else to go through what I went through. And that, and I wanted, I wanted a venue to be able to do that. And it just happened that Sandy was in LA and it was a work in progress, a 10 minute film. And I thought, and I'm so private and I would never have said to anybody that I was gay, not even my family, except for my sister. And, but for something, I was just driven when I saw the 10 minute short I just went up to Sandy and I said, this story is my life and I should be in your film. And it just, I was just was driven to it. And I didn't think about the ramifications 10 years later. I just, it, I was, it was just in the moment. And the whole process was so therapeutic on so many levels. And so you saved me thousands in therapy. So, uh, at least, I, I have to agree with that. But, uh, although, although I spent the thousands paying for these kosher Pesach dinners in the city, it's like out of control. But that's, that's another point. But anyways, thank you, Sandy, again. And, and let me also be clear. David was the only person I found worldwide who, was, who grew up Orthodox, who was still Orthodox, and willing to be on camera with his face. And Michelle was the... Thank you. And Michelle was the only Hasidic, only Hasidic lesbian, ex-Hasidic lesbian that I met. No, you're never ex-Hasidic. Oh, okay. You may not practice, but you're never ex-Hasidic. But you were the Come only Michelle. person who stepped forward. I, could, I spent six years trying to find any Orthodox parent who had a gay or lesbian child to be in the film. I couldn't find any over six years. Wow. And I happened to be at the Tzvi Arie AIDS Foundation fundraiser, which was a complete accident because my friend's partner didn't want to go. And she's like, ugh, can you please come with me? I don't want to go alone. So I went and I'm pouring myself a drink and I hear this guy saying, I really want to do this film and I want to interview people who are Hasidic or Orthodox and gay and nobody wants to talk on camera. And I turned around and said, I'll do it. And the next week, we were filming. So if you were to do a sequel of the film, what would be different? Would the silhouettes be as prominent? I mean, I'm, I would love to, I would be curious what everyone here would say. But um, yeah, I mean, I'm still amazed at just seeing, like remembering the moment where I had a lot of pushback. Do you remember this from a lot of Orthodox lesbian gay people who didn't want me to make this film? And I had this kind of big work in progress <coughs> evening with 90 people, all Hasidic Orthodox lesbian gay, and showing the rabbi reel. And that was a turning point because people felt like they were being taken seriously. They were treated as human beings. That broke something that was enormous and gained the trust of people to move forward. You know. I don't know how many or the, the what orthodox rabbis would say the transgender issue incredible next generation children who um, were so excited to meet I mean I feel like this film you know is just there's a sea change and this film would be immensely different um, now if we were shooting it um, well, uh, Sandy, and to all of you, thank you for sharing this uh, with us. Thank you very much for coming. Thanks especially to Sandy Dubowski.